Hi, I'm Brianne Burnson with Plum Fabulous Foods, and today I wanted to show you how easy it is to start your own plants. We're getting ready for the fall planting here in Texas, and so we're looking at starting our broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower, kohlrabi, any of your brassica family plants you want to go ahead and start inside now so you can get a jump on the season. And if you've never started your own plants, I want to show you that it's really easy to do. Okay, the first thing you want to do is start with something to put your dirt and your seeds in. So I like to just recycle these old vegetable trays here. And I like to use the, um, the six packs or the four packs because then when I'm out in my garden, I can just take these out and set them in the beds where I need to put them. So to fill them with dirt, you can buy a pre-bagged potting mix. I really recommend something organic, of course. Um, but we like to have a closed loop system as much as we can, which means I don't like to buy stuff if, if I don't uh, if I can help it. So we just used our own compost here that I sifted through a quarter inch screen. Once you get all your seed trays filled, then you just want to sit down in the comfort of your table, which is much easier than sitting out in the garden trying to deal with the wind and the hot weather. And you just want to poke some little holes in all of your seed trays and go ahead and drop your seeds in. Now most, most of the seeds that you ever want to plant need to be planted to a depth of about four times the height of the seed. So most of these seeds you can see are very tiny. And so I just poke a little hole in there with my finger. And I typically will do two seeds per seed tray hole. So that in case one doesn't germinate, hopefully the second one will. And then you just want to cover them up with dirt. So planting seeds is something that's lots of fun for all ages, as you can see by all my little helpers here. Say hi guys. Hi. One of the most important things about starting your own seeds is being sure that you label them. So this right here is a tray of early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. And I tried several different seed markers over the years. Um, I really like plastic, white plastic utensils that you can break off um, knives especially. You can break them in half and you can use both sides of the knife and just take a sharpie and write the variety on there. Another thing that works well is old blinds. So something that's sort of plasticky and a sharpie works really well. I've tried um, popsicle sticks, I've tried lots of different things in the past. And once you start watering these trays, if the item, if the seed marker gets wet and the sharpie rubs off, you're really in trouble for knowing what you planted in that seed tray. Once you've got all your seeds planted, then you want to go ahead and water them. This step's really best to do outside as it's kind of messy. The first time you give them some water, I just like to really drench them, get that soil moist. The great thing about compost is that it holds water so well, and so I can really overwater them. The final step is to put your seeds somewhere where they're going to get adequate light. When you're starting new seeds, they really need about 16 hours a day of good lighting. We like to set this um, in a seed tray set up like this. We've got these LED lights. You can see some of our older, we still have some of the older incandescent lights. But I really like these LED lights because they put off less heat and so they're less likely to dry the soil out fast, as fast as the incandescent lights. And you can see I've got them on chains here so I can raise them and lower them. It's really nice like this because this seed tray is at a different height than this one and you want to keep the light about two or three inches off of the soil and the plants while they're growing, really off of the plants. So right now it's as close to the soil as I can get it. And as the plants grow, I'm gonna raise those lights up to keep them about two inches above the sprouting plants. So they're gonna sit in here for about six weeks. I'm gonna water them about every other day or as I see the soil uh, needing it. And then in about um, six weeks, they're gonna be ready to go outside and I'm gonna get a great jump start on my fall garden. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And you can check out our website, plumfabulousfoods.com, to learn more. Thanks.